Okay, entertainment, another big one that people often forget about. Uh, entertainment. Uh, entertainment, rule of thumb, you're having a good time, it's going to be entertainment. If you're stuck in a meeting having uh, various you know, muffins or whatnot, it's not going to be entertainment. If it's on, on site, usually uh, it's not going to be entertainment. If it's off site at a restaurant, it's going to be entertainment. I provided in the notes there a bit of a chart that gives you uh, some information of when you need to determine whether you're actually entertaining because I often find this is probably the, the big takeaway. If you have a ledger that you maintain as an employer, ensure that if you have some employees that are out travelling on business and they're going out to restaurants, that ordinarily is not entertainment. You need to segregate on your ledger that that is travelling expenses and not entertainment. Entertainment won't occur in that situation. And a lot of people forget, they just lump it into one general ledger category and they pay fringe benefits tax on the whole category. So you might be paying too much. Um, so that chart helps you. The method, the valuation method is key. And there's really uh, two common methods. You work out exactly what happened. That is, you had a table, employees, non-employees. You work out who had what, and then you categorise that as employee and non-employee entertainment, put it on your ledger, and then you can work out whether you have to pay FBT. Because you're only going to pay FBT on the employee's portion. Alternatively, if that's all too hard, you use the 50-50 method, which simply states that 50% of the value of the entertainment is subject to tax, 50% is not, you don't get a tax deduction for it. The key also is you don't get a GST credit. So make sure your ledger account is not picking up GST on entertainment that you're not claiming a tax deduction or not entitled to claim a tax deduction for. If you decide, look, 50-50 method, that's the easiest method, that's the method I want to adopt, you may find that you could be doing yourself injustice that you cannot use the minor benefit exemption. Minor benefit exemption states that if I provide, say, we go have a Christmas party, it's $200 a head, it's under $300, it's only minor or infrequent, and because it's under $300, there's no fringe benefits tax to pay. However, if I use the 50-50 method, I cannot use that minor benefit rule. So you may find that go through, use the minor benefit rule gives you a, a lot better result. A lot easier to do 50-50, but it may cost you a little bit of money. I talked about this entertainment facility leasing expense. That was where the not-for-profit in particular go out there and you know, rent the holiday home or um, go overseas trips, etc. They utilise this. Um, just be mindful, that's the area that the tax dollars don't like. So here's a very basic example, and I'll, I'll flick through these. Entertainment, so the, this is how the 50-50 method w uh, works. Add up your total entertainment. Remember, don't include the travel bit. That's irrelevant. Just the total entertainment. Divide it by two, you get $5,000. You gross it up, and the employer would, in this example here, pay $4,800 in tax. Don't forget the GST. You don't get the, the GST uh, credit back on all of it, and you only get half of it as a tax deduction. The FBT is always tax deductible. It's not like corporate tax where you don't get a tax deduction for it. Fringe benefits tax is a tax deduction. Alternatively, you may have this situation and you utilise this method. Again, $7,000 is the taxable value. That determines your tax deduction. That determines your input tax credit. Alternatively, the minor benefit. You may find that everyone who attended the entertainment was minor, was infrequent, was under $300, therefore there's no fringe benefits tax whatsoever. No tax deduction, no GST credit. And this is just, uh, just a little bit of information, uh, gives you an idea of how much it actually costs when you do entertain. Okay, we, we've talked about the not-for-profits, I won't go through them again. Uh, again, if you do work for a not-for-profit, there are always uh, great benefits to package. If you're an exempt or rebatable, worthwhile considering, especially once your income is around that 80,000 plus mark, you may find that you can save yourself uh, from $500 up depending on where your income is at. And that's regardless of what you actually package, whether it's private expenses or non-private expenses. Um, in order for this entertainment leasing facility to work for, the, for you, if you are in the not-for-profit space, you need to uh, comply with some of the, uh, the definitions of what is a entertainment leasing facility. And I've just given some information there. Again, what I would be doing, if you're going to do it, or you're going to do it for all your employees, it wouldn't be a bad idea to get the tax office to tick off on it by way of a private ruling. 
because it's something that they don't like. 